Elena Kaluza and Latasha Powell. That's the first item. Second item coming forward from the committee is approving a, a following appointments to fill unexpired terms on our Community Environmental Advisory Commission. These are just two. Uh, Jenna Grave, representing Clean Water Action, uh, that's an environmental advocacy group, and Ricardo McCurley, uh, a mayoral appointment representing residents. The third item is another appointment, and this is to the Minneapolis Advisory Committee on Aging, and that's the appointment of Deborah Jakawa. And the, um, the remaining two items are not appointments. The first is approving neighborhood revitalization plan review guidelines, and this has to do with the uh, expenditure of funds and directs the neighborhood and community relations and finance property services staff that any neighborhood for which phase two funded contract is amended to remove funds or closed out with a balance remaining in that contract. Uh, this is a policy that will essentially uh, um, create a review process if money hasn't been allocated within seven years. And the final item is, is authorizing agreements um, with uh, three of our clinics uh, to implement process and care improvements for hypertension and pre-diabetes management for priority adult populations in Minneapolis um, for up to 24 months. And that's Neighborhood Health Source, Hennepin County North Point Health and Wellness Center, and the University of Minnesota Community University Health Care Center. And I will move all five items forward for approval. Councilmember Gordon has moved uh, the Health Environment and Community Engagement Report. Any discussion on any of those items? Councilmember Wright. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Wish to speak briefly on item four. Okay. Uh, why don't you go ahead, please? Uh, thank you, Madam President, and uh, thank you, uh, Chair Gordon. Um, I serve on the NRP Committee uh, for the City Council, and uh, this was a pretty well vetted, uh, public engaged sort of process to first recognize how community groups have been spending their dollars and managing their dollars over the years. And I think there's some really good work uh, by staff to show the pattern of um, expenditures and pretty consistent with initial policies that were outlined. And I think here brings further clarity to, to those patterns and a process by which uh, if there's any discrepancy from uh, uh, the policy of how monies are spent. And I think this is a pretty well vetted community supported outcome. Any further discussion on the health environment and community engagement report? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Council Member Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That report is adopted. Next, we have the Intergovernmental Relations Report, and that committee is chaired by Council Member Glidden. Thank you, uh, Madam President. We have two items for approval today. The first is um, the 2016 City of Minneapolis um, State Policy Positions, State Legislative Policy Positions list. And item number two is a rail safety resolution, which I'll just note originated in the Transportation and Public Works Committee. And I will move approval of both items. Councilmember Glidden has moved the Intergovernmental Relations Report. Any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll. There's a, I, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, excuse me, Councilmember Wright. Uh, thank you, Madam President. A brief comment on item two. Okay, that would uh, be fine. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate the, the work that was done um, by the committee and certainly the IGR staff and Gene Ranieri in particular and the legal department to do a lot of uh, research to back uh, the items within this rather complex subject matter uh, and a rather uh, robust and complex uh, re resolution that responds to these complex issues. Um, don't want to get into those, all the ends that are articulated within there, but I want to do uh, highlight the underlying premise. The underlying premise is a simple one. In complex, dense urban environments, you have a situation that is not typical for much of the rail system. It's much more risk. Uh, uh, the risk is much greater. You have more people. You have uh, very complicated land use uh, patterns. And if we have a one-size-fits-all federal policy for aggregation, we're going to be missing out on the best practices for safety of our citizenry. And so here we address that as a, as a simple uh, principle with, with, with several uh, ways we think we can meet uh, issues and concerns that are identified in the community. Another uh, principle in terms of how we get there uh, that's baked into this resolution is the simple notion that we need to be backed by the federal government to allow lo local municipalities to do what they do best in terms of land use and projects that they are presented with. We No project that goes before us uh, typically, no matter who the party is, uh, without sort of legal review, with the exception of rail companies. We want those exceptions uh, uh, not extended anymore. We want them to be ended. 
So we can do what we do for our citizenry, which is review projects. We're not here to stop projects, but review them and make sure best practices are in place before they move forward, not after the fact, but before the fact. And so those are some of the key sort of means to the ends that we desire regarding safety that are in here, let alone the enumeration of those ends. And then, of course, the simple principle that urban areas have higher risk, and we want that to be recognized. Thank you. Any further discussion on the IGR report? Seeing none, quick call the roll. Council Member Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Lydon. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That report is adopted. Next, we have Public Safety, Civil Rights, and Emergency Management. And that committee is chaired by <coughs> Councilmember Yang. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, today, we have three items uh, for approval. The first item is the Police Mounted Patrol Boarding Services contract. The second is the Downtown Council's uh, DID contract amendment for increased summer police enforcement. And the third item is a DWI Enforcement Officer Grant Award from the Minnesota Department of Public Safety Office of Traffic Safety. And I will move all three items for approval. Councilmember Yang has moved the Public Safety, Civil Rights, and Emergency Management Report. Any discussion on those items? Seeing none, click call the roll. Council Member Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsani. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. <laughs> that report is adopted. Uh, next, we have the Transportation Public Works Report. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Reich. Uh, thank you, Madam President. The committee forwards uh, 15 items today for consideration. Uh, item one is the 2015 levy of various public works department special assessments. Uh, item two is the 2016 uh, uniform assessment rates. Item three is the solid waste recycling services and commercial pricing structure change. Uh, item four is the priorities uh, bridge replacement list. Item five is the 7th Street North reconstruction project uh, and a variance request associated with that. Item six is the 38th Street East reconstruction uh, project, uh, designation of a public hearing, and that public hearing to be January 19th, 2016. Uh, item seven is the 3rd Avenue South redesign project, uh, variance request associated with that project. Mm -hmm. Item eight is the West 29th Street reconstruction project, and that is to approve layout and uh, easements. Item nine is the Northern Tributary 35W uh, North Tunnel Modeling Project and Funding Agreement, and that's a funding agreement with the Mississippi Watershed Management Organization to do additional um, mapping out of our system. Item 10 is the North Region Watershed Modeling Project and similarly a, a partnership with the Watershed Organization to additional um, analysis of our system. Item 11 is the Nicollet Mall Public Art Agreement uh, Correction, and that's a correction of the data sent in the previous action. Item 12 is the impound lot uh, improvement project, and that's approving the concept plan for a reduced uh, impound lot size and shift it to the easterly side, and authorizing Public Works and Finance and Property Service Department to proceed with the project implementation for reducing, modifying the impound lot uh, as described in the project. Uh, item 13 is the bid for liquid carbon dioxide, and that's exceptional low bid from the supplier. Item 14 is a bid for Columbia Heights Mixing Chamber a hallway a painting project, and that's also to accept a low bid from a supplier. And the final item is a bid for automated meter reading equipment, and that's accepting a single bid from a supplier. Uh, we can analyze the cost, and it's uh, consistent with past purchases. Uh, with that, Madam President, I move all items for approval. Councilmember Reich has moved the Transportation Public Works Report. Any discussion on any of those items? Councilmember Goodman? Thank you, Madam President. I want to comment on item number 12. I realize that it's not the most sexy or exciting item on our agenda, but it has a meaningful impact to a very large number of citizens in the city of Minneapolis. This is with regard to finally um, consolidating and making some changes in our impound lot. Um, in, in the old days, when I liked to drive, my car could drive itself to the impound lot. It had been there so many times. I lived in the Loring Park neighborhood for 20 years. I represent a lot of people who live in rental property in very dense housing, and they have had a lot of experiences with snow emergencies and going to the impound lot. While I understand the importance of the city taking control of roadways for street sweeping and snow emergencies, if we have to tow someone's car, we don't need to treat them like a criminal in order to do it. And the situation at the impound lot up until now has gone downhill fairly fast. The fact that people could be in line for several hours without having access to bathrooms, uh, the fact that they would have to wait outside in the cold, and currently um, people are waiting in trailers. 
Uh, this has been an issue both in the seventh ward and in the fifth ward because of its land use. There are a lot of people who would prefer it not be in this location. Um, I live in the Bryn Mawr neighborhood. That's the neighborhood where the impound lot is located. But I would say that for an impound lot, it's not a terrible use. And in fact, I think we're going to need to do some exterior improvements to the property. But from my point of view, how the neighbors look at it from the outside isn't anywhere near as important as how people deal with it from the inside. And I think we have a responsibility to people who are unfortunate and have their cars towed to make sure that their experience with us in the impound lot, although it's a bad experience, uh, doesn't become any worse because we want to um, punish you once you get there. So this is a gigantic move forward. I can just note that Council President uh, Jackie Cherry Holmes, Council Member Natalie Johnson Lee, Council Member Don Samuels, and now Council Member Yang have all worked with me in an effort to try to get this capital improvement done. It is a long time coming, and I realize that it, it's not the most important thing that we deal with at the city, but I think it will have a real effect on a very large number of people. Council Member Yang. Um, thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to um, second or echo uh, Councilmember Goodman's uh, comments, although I do have to say it's really important for everybody, or it seemed like it when we did community engagement and people were uh, coming from such different places and had so much, um, you know, some folks had a history, some folks were just very angry. And I think, you know, as I said before, uh, this is probably the best sort of compromise under the circumstances. And so uh, I just want to thank Council Member Goodman for working with us and vice versa to just, you know, get this to a place where um, everybody uh, could be, I wouldn't say happy, but could be maybe okay with it or not too angry with it. And that's a good thing. So um, looking forward to this shrinkage. And I, I think it's, it's going to help with... Um, a lot of things, and you know, hopefully, I mean, that 11.2 acres that's going to be freed up, I mean, will be developed at some point. I mean, I just don't know when, but I'm hopeful. Any further discussion on the Transportation Public Works report? Seeing none, click call the roll. Council Member Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Lydon. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. President Johnson. Aye on all except no on item seven. There are 12 ayes on the report except for number seven, which has 11 ayes and one nay. That report is adopted. And next we have the Ways and Means Report, and that committee is chaired by Councilmember Quincy. Uh, thank you, Madam President. We have 16 items for your consideration this morning. Uh, the first is a uh, personal injury claim. Uh, the next two items are workers' compensation claims. And the uh, fourth item from the city attorney's office is the placement of attorneys and law firms on the legal services panel. Uh, we also have a uh, contract with Data Systems Corporation for the legislative information management system. Uh, item number six is the acceptance of a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts for the Creative City Making Minneapolis project. Uh, item number seven is the contract with the Minnesota Department of Commerce for the weatherization data conversion to public <laughs> summary data. Uh, items uh, 8, 9, and 10, and 11 are related to uh, construction projects and contract closeouts uh, for uh, items related to the Minneapolis Convention Center. Item number 12 is tax exempt loans with uh, U.S. Bank for the Nicollet Mall project. Uh, item 13 is the acceptance of gifts for the construction of downtown East Commons. Uh, item number 14 is the contract amendment with Ginfonet software for JR report reporting software. Uh, item 15 is the contract amendment with Kells Innovation for the Mozart data collection system. And a final item is a contract amendment with N. Harris, uh, which does businesses uh, systems and software Inc. for the utility billing system. I'd like to move all 16 items for approval. Councilmember Quincy has moved uh, the entire Ways and Means report. Anyone want to pull anything off or discuss any of those items? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Councilmember Borden. Aye. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Lydon. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. <laughs> that report is adopted. Next, we have the zoning and planning report. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Bender. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. There are 13 items from the Zoning and Planning Committee. Item number one is a parking area variance appeal at 3515 2nd Avenue South. Item number two is a floor area ratio variance denying an appeal at 13, sorry, 113 East 26th Street. Item number three is denying an appeal for a non-conforming use um, application at the Carmel Mall. Item number four is the landmark designation of the Spokesman Recorder Building at 3744 4th Avenue South. Item number five is the landmark designation of the Anson Brooks Mansion at 2445 Park Avenue. Item number six is re approving a rezoning application um, submitted at 1313 Chestnut Avenue South to rezone that property um, by adding an industrial living overlay district to an existing light industrial district uh, to allow for an addition of an indoor theater um, and updating the zoning code accordingly. Item number seven is uh, approval of the Loring Park rezoning study, um, noting that in um, seven um, part two, there are several um, specific amendments to the study, keeping the zoning of the Basilica property, um, um, leaving the existing zoning at St. Mark's OR2, um, directing staff to return to the Planning Commission related to recommendations for phase two of this process within 12 months, and looking again at the small area policy guidance to make sure that it is consistent with what has come out of this rezoning study. Uh, item number eight is approving applications related to the Weber Park Library. Um, as is item number nine, which is approving an application to rezone that property to allow for the library. Uh, and then items uh, 10, 11, and 12 are all staff referrals, 10 related to snow storage, 11 for fence regulations, and 12 for the Linden Hills Zoning Overlay District. Item number 13 was a receive and file item, um, which was a... Um, Councilmember Bender? Yes, Madam Chair. We don't have those items on our... Oh, those are not for council approval. I was just... Okay. Um, Oh, I see. I'll move items okay. one through nine. I just All wanted right, to. Great, great. Um, Sorry. No, no problem. Uh, All right. It's probably Keep not going. necessary. Keep going. But item number 13 was a um, receive and file item related to the um, housing inventory that uh, long range planning and housing worked on together, which I think will be a really exciting tool. So I'll move items one through nine. I also want to note that item number one is, was to, to grant that appeal. Councilmember Bender has moved uh, the zoning and planning report. Any discussion on any of those items? Councilmember Glidden. Thanks, Madam Chair. I had comment on item number four, mm -hmm. which is the designation of yep. the Minnesota spokesman. Should go ahead. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted an opportunity to make some comments on this historic designation or local historic designation of the Minnesota spokesman recorder, which is physically located in the eighth ward, and we're joined today by Tracy Williams Dillard, who is the owner of this business and the granddaughter of the founder. And I'm just wanted to make a few comments. Um, the Minnesota Spokesman Recorder, we recognize with a resolution actually a few uh, cycles ago, uh, recognizing their 80th year as a business. They are the oldest black-owned business in the state of Minnesota. In um, 1934, this uh, business was formed actually as the Minneapolis Spokesman and the St. Paul Recorder, two newspapers. Cecil Newman, um, who was the founder, said, I didn't have enough money for one newspaper, so I established two. I've always appreciated that quote. Um, and he founded this newspaper at a time of legalized oppression and legalized segregation. And it became the only African-American newspaper in the state of Minnesota. Um, this uh, newspaper, um, has been a place for news that serves the African American community ever since. And Cecil Newman himself um, was without doubt a complete political powerhouse. Um, he worked with community, he worked with elected leaders, he was active in Washington DC, he advocated for change. He used the newspaper um, not only to share news, but also as a place for opinion and for advocacy. One um, example is uh, an economic boycott that he um, organized uh, through using the newspaper. And uh, today, I, I just want to say this um, seems especially meaningful to me that we are recognizing the, Minneapolis, the Minnesota Spokesman Recorder 
Um, it is, uh, of course, no secret that Minnesota and Minneapolis are the subject of international news right now um, in a way that we wish we were not, but we are. Um, and we have protests that are happening uh, every day, talking uh, about justice for a young man, a young black man, Jamar Clark, who was fatally shot on Sunday evening or Sunday morning by a Minneapolis police officer. Our city has asked for independent investigations, and those are ongoing, but there are broader issues that the community is talking about, um, issues of institutional racism. And the Minnesota Spokesman Recorder has been in the center of that news, reporting on that news, and I just want to say I appreciate you and your connection to the community, and I hope that you're in business for many, many years more. Thank you. Any further discussion on the zoning and planning report? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. She's just having a quick uh, cough in the other room. <laughs> Fry. Aye. <laughs> President Johnson. Aye. Dari, 11 ayes. That report is adopted. Next, we have the introduction and referral calendar. Uh, and the first item is pursuant to notice, Councilmember Warsami moves to introduce the subject matter and ordinance amending the code relating to heritage preservation for first reading and referral to the Zoning and Planning Committee, simplifying the required findings for a certificate of appropriateness applications. That notice is given. Under unfinished business, Councilmember Wright. Uh, yes, Madam President. Uh, Wish to uh, pass a resolution adopting the levy assessments for water and sewer service line repairs at the property located 1729 North uh, Second Street and direct. Uh, Council Member Reich, I think your your motion is to remove or delete. I'm yeah, sorry, correct. that was the unfinished business. We, that was the unfinished business motion. Sorry. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, Reich moves to delete the agenda, uh, water and sewer service at that address, 1729 North Street, North Second Street. Councilor Reich moves to delete from agenda um, item one under unfinished business. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Under new business, um, Councilmember Yang has a motion to direct staff to create a, and support a work group tasked with identifying strategies for the marketing, yeah. sale, development, and use of government-owned lots in Minneapolis. Councilmember Yang. Thank you, Madam President. Um, you covered most of it, so I, I just wanted to um, just say that uh, with regards to vacant lots um, in areas that are market challenged, um, you know, I think we as a city need to really think about how we uh, approach it, be creative in terms of uh, figuring out what to put on them. And, um, you know, with this work group, uh, one thing to try to figure out what we can do creatively to get to some resolution that um, both uh, saves us money and uh, is a value to the community that we represent. So um, I, I ask for your support. On Councilmember Yang's motion, any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. And item two, under new business, Councilmember Wright gives notice of an intent to introduce at the next regular meeting of the City Council the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code relating to car share operators. <laughs> uh, that notice is given. Any announcements this morning? Council I've President my, Johnson, I, I have uh, put Council Member Kano, just a second. Let me get in back into my um, into my screen here. Council Member Kano. Oh, I'm sorry. You have an item under new business? No, I actually oh. wanted to speak on Council Member Yang's. Um, oh. I'm sorry. New business thing. But, okay. So, uh, of course, I am in support of it and I voted for it, but I just wanted to um, briefly mention that I think this work is really important to connect to the uh, work we're doing with our corporate facts um, consulting group to analyze how we've helped um, to uh, get the city out of the foreclosure crisis and how we are connecting this work to um, the, um, the HUD complaint that is before us, as well as connecting it to conversations around uh, protecting 
and continuing to promote affordability and accessibility for the residents of Minneapolis. And of course, uh, as we just had a, a rigorous debate here around access to urban lots and around um, urban agriculture. So um, I thank Council Member Blang Yang for bringing this forward and I look forward to participating in the work group. Any further discussion then? Seeing none, announcements are in front of us. Anybody have any announcements? No, sir, I'm sorry, we do not allow uh, our, our council rules do not permit uh, public comments at council meetings. That happens at our committee meetings, and the council meeting is held to act on committee recommendations. I'm sorry. Any further announcements? Seeing none, uh, a motion to adjourn to be in order, and it's a motion to adjourn to a closed session for purposes of a security briefing. Second. All in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. We are adjourned. Thank you.